All right, music fans, welcome. Harmless Dave here talking real music in real time for a few real people out there just like you and just like me. Thanks for watching. Um, <laughs> more fighting and feuding between uh, Daryl Hall and John Oates. Uh, John Oates responds to Daryl Hall. All right, before I get to that... Um, here is my favorite adult contemporary album for 2023. Uh, this is Quint Starkey, Quintessential. Uh, I was sick for a week back in like June, and uh, I ordered this album, and it wasn't that easy to get. And uh, the album made me feel better, okay? Um, this is the kind of music that won't make your ears bleed. Very classy production very rich and lush in its um its sound uh very gentle on the ears but uh will bring you back to like the days of you know boz skaggs and people like that if you like boz skaggs or um that west coast adult contemporary sound from the late 70s uh, this is it with really high production value throughout quint quint starkey quint Q-U-I-N-T, all right, in case you wanted to know how to spell that. Um, all right, so Hall & Oates, back in the news again. Um, the headline reads, John Oates deeply hurt, deeply hurt by Daryl Hall's accusations. So he didn't see this coming. Um, Hall's legal action, which includes a temporary restraining order, was filed earlier this month in Tennessee. He claims Oates was seeking to sell his portion of the Hall & Oates joint venture to the company Primary Wave, uh, who pretty much own everything. And that action would violate the terms of the pair's previous business agreement. Uh, Primary Wave, by the way, already owns a portion of the duo's catalog, but Hall says Oates' most recent decision blindsided him. All right, so... Um, if Primary Wave already owns a portion of the catalog, how is this uh, a blindsided move? I don't understand. Um, I am disappointed. This is uh, John Oates speaking here. I am disappointed that he decided to publicize issues that are the subject of our private mediation and our private arbitration. Uh, this is what he said in a new legal declaration filed in response to Hall's claims. I have no idea who or what is motivating Daryl to take these steps and make such uh, salacious statements, but I am deeply hurt. <laughs> Wonder who it is. <laughs> oh, I, you know, I can't say it. I had something in my brain that if I actually decided to say it would be really mean about who I think it could be. Anyway, uh, he declined to comment on specific allegations made by Daryl Hall, but emphasized that although he and Hall have not always seen eye to eye, the protection of their joint catalog is a priority. In fact, Daryl, this is according to Oates, has become unwilling to work with me to try to protect the marks and other intellectual property that we spent decades building. Oates said he's very aware of the importance and relevance uh, or reverence that our fans in the world have for the music that Daryl and I have made together. This is why I have been working hard to protect the value of our intellectual property by selling it off to Private Wave. Um, no, to allow music lovers around the world to continue to enjoy the music of Hall & Oates. Now, again... I've talked about this before. Um, by the way, a, a small sampling of all of the people that have sold their soul to Primary Wave. Uh, Sun Records, Bob Marley, Stevie Nicks, Frankie Valli, Smokey Robinson, Whitney Houston, Burt Bacharach. Imagine all of those Burt Bacharach songs gone. Uh, Prince, Olivia Newton-John, Ray Charles, Aerosmith, Def Leppard, Robbie Robertson, Count Basie, Sly, and the Family Stone. Boston, the band Boston, really. Alice Cooper, Paul Anka, Boy George and Culture Club, Allie Williams, Leon Russell, Free, Toots and the Maytals, Steve Cropper, Glenn Gould, Air Supply, Holly Knight, 
Godsmack, Disturbed, Devo, Donny Hathaway, Nikki Chin, Noel Hogan from the Cranberries, Dan Wilson, KT Tunstall, Patrick Leonard, Sturkin and Rogers, and many more. The songs represented by Primary Wave include over 1,000 top 10 singles and over 400 number one hits. 400 number one hits. So you're just selling your soul to these marketeers who are going to go out there and try to keep your music alive uh, into the future and beyond (laughs) to infinity and beyond. And uh, it is a little weird. I mean, these people created the music and uh, toward the end of their lives, toward the, the end of their careers, they're more than willing to just say, you know what, uh, just take the lump sum. And I think John Oates probably thought he could do what he was doing since they had done it already. And now he's in trouble because he didn't run it by Daryl Hall. And just in general, maybe they don't get along all that well. You know, Daryl Hall went on with Bill Maher and talked about uh, how he's the creative side and uh, John Oates doesn't do that much, according to Daryl Hall. And it's a brand, Hall and Oates. Sounds good, right? Hall sounds boring, but Hall and Oates kind of sounds like a breakfast cereal, but still, you know what, folks? Everybody knows that name. Everybody. If you say Daryl Hall, it's like, yeah, it's good, but it's kind of incomplete. You say John Oates, and you're like, same thing. So anyway, um, I think John Oates is a genuine person here. I think he is uh, disappointed. And um, I'm wondering, though, I mean, (laughs) did this have to go so public, like he says? Um, The other stuff I hear from people, uh, you know, Daryl Hall, difficult to work with. Daryl Hall, kind of a diva. I met Daryl Hall one time, and he didn't treat me very well. This is all anecdotal stuff. This isn't, you know, general knowledge because up until this moment, I just thought, hey, these two guys are still around. They still like each other. And uh, apparently that's not the truth. So John Oates, uh, for all intents and purposes, seems like a nice guy, seems more approachable, but who the heck knows, right? He may be just as hard to talk to. Hey, Daryl, hey, John, you want to come on and well, I'll mediate, right? I'll be the referee in the middle, um, and we can hash this out, but they can't come on because, you know, there's a, a legal struggle that has uh, ensued, and so this may take a while. These cases go on for a while, and uh, this is all about money, folks, at the end, because both of these guys already have a ton of money, And to sell your publishing off, you're getting a huge lump sum on top of all the other money and the trademarks and all that stuff. And someone else is going to manage your fortune. And sometimes you get something, you know, long-term residual. Other times you just take the money and run, like uh, Steve Miller says. So there you have it. You know, Steve Miller reference there. I thought that was pretty good. So um, look, folks, it's um, too bad that money has to be really the root of some of these problems, but uh, the classic rock era, this is how it's going to sort of go away. This is how things are ending. It's not that exciting. We should be talking about how amazing the latest Hall & Oates album is, which that's not a thing. We should be talking about how they're out on tour, killing it right now. Again, that's not a thing, although it's been off and on over the years, you can kind of depend on Hall and Oates to be out there from time to time. But uh, both of these guys are more active right now as uh, solo performers. And you've got Daryl's House, which just rebooted, um, which is a good thing, keeping the music going. All right. So that's pretty much all I've got on this uh, for now. I'm sure uh, the legal battle will continue. And uh, when I get more info, I will bring it to you, and I'll bring my commentary as well. I'm a huge Hollow Notes fan um, from day one, right? At least my musical awareness. The first concert, I was telling somebody the other day, the first concert I ever went to. This is a strange double bill. Daryl Hall and John Oates opening up for Southside Johnny and the Asbury Jukes, 1979. That was my first concert, and my parents were really worried 
they left me there and then they came back and they picked me up and I didn't know that much about either. <laughs> I I knew a couple of uh Hall and Oates songs, um, but I knew nothing about Southside Johnny. So it was a great time. Um and you know, if you're gonna go see a concert, you get a lot of um great musicians there with Southside Johnny. You want to go see a concert like that as your first because then the bar is set reasonably high. You know, if you're going to go see a punk band, I'm just saying, and there's nothing wrong with punk bands, but um, Hall and Oates, you know, the horn sections and uh, all the different uh, instruments that were going back and forth, that was, uh, that was an experience for somebody who had never been to a concert, a live concert. So, yeah, I'm a big fan of Hall and Oates um, since 1979 and technically even before that. All right, folks, uh, hopefully I've got a few fans here on the channel still. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Also, don't forget, Patreon, if you can help me out. I've got a core group of people that put up with me and help me out all the time. You know, a few leave and a few show up. So each month we're ending November. We're going into December, so I can really use your uh, support moving forward. Uh, trying to finish the year on a strong note. The last couple of weeks have been better for once, so I just want to say thank you to everybody for watching the videos and uh, more content coming your way soon. So stand by.